What's going on everybody? Welcome back to OH Studio. Today we're taking a look at how to convert these beautiful contours of the Marin headlands into something in 3D that we can easily manipulate like this 3D surface. So let's get right into it. Before I get started, look at this graph. Sometimes I have to cry myself to sleep looking at it. Help me out, subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Now what we have here is the contours of a large scale terrain. If we're working with smaller scales, I have another video that will teach you how to do this with simpler commands. But here, if we have uh, something that is way larger, you can see the mountain ranges as well as things like highways going through here, then we're gonna wanna use this method. So first we wanna do is just create a layer that is called mesh because that is what we'll be creating in order to get our final terrain. We will also be using grasshopper for this just to automate it. And don't worry, it's not gonna be super hard. It's just three different commands. So first thing we're gonna do is just go and type grasshopper in the command strip. It'll bring up the grasshopper uh, interface here. I'm just gonna make mine a little bit smaller. And there's gonna be three simple prompts that we're gonna put in here. First one being curve. So this will select all of our curves here. Second one will be control point. So type in control point. And make sure you guys are selecting this one. This is the, the symbol that you want to look for. This is the one you want to add in. The third, we're going to use Delaunay Mesh. And if you just type in D-E-L-A-U-N-A-Y, it should come up, Delaunay Mesh. Great. So now that we have three of these guys, you can either first connect it like this. So we want to connect here to the control points or the curves. And then the points that are output, we want to put in to the Delaunay mesh. Now, what we want to do is right click on curve. And then what we want to do is set multiple curves. So what we need to do is select every single curve that is in this contour and then hit enter. What it's going to do is add all of that into our curve uh, prompt in Grasshopper. And it's going to calculate that for everything. Now, since I connected everything before, uh, we actually did all of the selection of the curves. It's going to make the final output right away. So it's going to go directly here. If I select the Delaunay mesh, you can see in green, that's what it made. Now, this doesn't look very correct. Now, that is because we are not calculating the curves um, together. We're basically calculating each curve by itself, and they're not really related to each other. To fix this, we go up to here where it says P, which is the control points. And then what we're gonna do is flatten it. That'll allow us to basically relate each of the curves to each other, and then it'll calculate everything as one singular surface rather than what it is right now, which you can't really see, but it's like thin slices of pancake. So depending on how fast your computer is, it's a good idea to just wait rather than you know close it down and try it again. Uh, there's a lot of calculations that happens, especially if your computer is not as good like what mine is doing right now. Uh, but eventually it'll spit something out like you see just now. Now I'm gonna show you what it basically spat out for us. I'm gonna turn off the preview for these guys. And I'm also going to turn off the line work. So now you can see that we have a mesh that is basically still in Grasshopper, so we can't select it. But you can see it's got some really good definition of the landscape here. Does, there's some indents here that it's picking up. This is great, it is exactly what we want. So now I'm going to go back to Grasshopper, select our Delaunay Mesh, and then we're going to bake this. Now to bake it is to make it into a real thing in our model space, and we're gonna bake it into the mesh layer. So it's gonna bring up a invalid mesh, and I think we're okay with that. There might be some lines that are basically duplicated, or they might be uh, multiple control points, but we're okay with that. We're gonna fix that in just a moment. Okay, great, now that we have our mesh in, I'm gonna go ahead and close Grasshopper. Um, before I do that, actually, I'm going to turn off the preview for that, just so we are not confused by anything. This is our mesh, it looks really crazy. Uh, but if I go into rendered mode, you can see that we actually do have our terrain here, and it's looking good. You can see the highway coming in here, you can see the headlands over here. Okay, so right now, if we go back to the shaded view, you can see that it's a little bit messy. Now we can reduce the size of this. Uh, we can go to mesh, uh, reduce mesh, and then it'll tell you how many polygons it has. Right now it's about 2 million. Uh, and I found that a good thumb 
uh, a gr- good rule of thumb, sorry, is if we reduce it by anywhere between zero and 30%, it's not going to affect the terrain way too much. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to reduce it by 30%. And again, click OK and just wait for your computer to actually do the calculations. It might take a while. Okay, so now that it has reduced it by 30%, we lost about 600,000 faces. If I go back into rendered view, you can see that it's basically the same thing, right? Um, so that's great. We have a mesh that is reduced, uh, but we know that in Rhino and these 3D software, meshes aren't really easily manipulated. So what we're going to do next is make these into NURBs. Great, we have our mesh here. We want to make it into a NURB, which is what Rhino can work with. First thing I want to do is just make something like a surface below it. And essentially, we're going to drape something. So I'm going to make this into a surface by using the planar surface command. And you can kind of see that there's a surface now that is here. I don't have my gumball turned on. If you want to understand why this tool is so good, watch this video here that I have prepared on my channel. I'll put it on the top right corner. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and just make sure that this is just below your model. Okay, now that we have both of these guys, we're going to run the drape command. Before that, it's a good idea to create a new layer, call it drape. I already have something like this for a test that I did, uh, but it's a good idea to organize your surfaces. So I'm going to make this the active layer. We're going to double click on perspective and go into the top view and we're going to simply type in drape. So it's going to ask us to drape a window over an area. Uh, these are the parameters that you have to play with. Spacing is what it has, and it's the most important thing that we want to play with. So for example, if spacing is five, you can see that the grid of triangles that it's making is going to be, to be this size. But if we want it to be a little bit more precise, then we can change that to have a spacing that is lower. So um, if we do something like two, just to show what that looks like and drag it over again, you can see that the definition of the squares is a lot higher. So just remember that if you want a higher definition NURB surface that you can edit, make sure that the spacing is lower in value. If you want something that is not as defined in definition, then it can go higher. So we're going to use the two as an example here. And what I like to do is select the mesh. We're going to use the command dupe border to get the border of our mesh itself. And then I like to just trim um, the nerve that we just made. So go ahead and click the outside of the nerve there to trim it away. And great. So now we have this, which is the thing that we made before. Uh, I can go ahead and delete it because we don't really need it anymore. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and also hide the mesh. So now that you can see, we basically have our terrain model in a NURB that we can actually edit. So for example, if I want to cut a square out of this NURB, I can actually do that if I go to here and then I go to split and go here. You can see that it's basically going to cut this out from the landscape itself. And again, we can manipulate this. Maybe this is a shopping mall or something. You can basically extrude this. And in the landscape, it'll become something that you can manipulate. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. I think this is actually the best way to do this to a large terrain model. Uh, if you guys have learned anything, please don't hesitate to leave a comment and subscribe. Leave your questions down in the comments. That's where I see them the most, and that's where I'll respond to the most. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed, learned anything new, please leave a like, do subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.